I'm going to uh, introduce uh, our panel members and they're going to do a short seven minute presentation before we get into the Q&A. Uh, next up is James Easton. James is a senior agronomist at CSBP where he's worked for more than 30 years. James is going to provide some tips for fertiliser strategies for 2022. Great, thanks David and uh, thanks to GRDC too for the invitation to come along and have a chat today. So yeah, fertiliser prices are pretty high and, and much higher than what we're used to or accustomed to, to seeing. Uh, probably not a lot we can do about it as growers uh, this year but I think when you look at the cost of growing a tonne of grain, I think there's a fair bit we can do by focusing on getting better results from the product we're using and, and also having a good focus on, a strong focus on the return on investment. So three things I think, you know, as many we could look at really, but three, three things that come to mind I want to talk about today are firstly the importance of understanding what your requirements are and also what you've got in your soils. Secondly, the opportunity to increase fertiliser use efficiencies by um, perhaps looking to ban more nitrogen and potassium, two nutrients which we're seeing um, the greatest need for around the state, particularly a lighter, a medium and increasingly a, a stronger soil types. And thirdly, look at uh, the need to continue the good work we're doing with amelioration um, because it can make a huge difference to the fertiliser use efficiencies. Rightio, so uh, just to kick off with here is, is a graph which shows uh, the amount of nutrients which are taken up in the green bars and removed in the grain of a three tonne to the hectare wheat crop. So uh, three tonnes is a pretty good yield for some parts of the state. Uh, if you're growing half the, half the yield, it's half the removal rate, half the uptake. If you're growing a six tonne crop, it's double the removal rate. So the key points to take out of here are that crops need a lot of nitrogen, big crops need a lot of nitrogen. We grew a lot of big crops last year, which removed and depleted, I think, uh, the reserves in a lot of paddocks across the state. The, the other thing is the need for potassium. Deficiencies are becoming more and more widespread, and potassium is so, having adequate supply is so critical to getting the responses we should be getting to uh, the nitrogen we're applying. So you can see that potassium is, the need for potassium is much, much greater than the need for other nutrients. They're all essential nutrients. These are just the macro and secondary nutrients. They're all essential nutrients, but crops do need a lot of N and K, uh, particularly if those are deficient in our paddocks. Uh, a lot of cropping over the years, it's starting to run those things down. The other thing about last year is with the big crops, we've got a lot of stubble lying around in paddocks. So with high stubble loads on paddocks uh, on the surface, we would expect to see uh, more benefits than normal from banning nitrogen and, and getting it down into the root zone uh, from, from the start of the season. So what I've got here is just a summary of all the trials we've done, looking at, just looking at those efficiency gains we get from banding nitrogen. So every dot on that chart is one trial where we've compared the yield response to banding Flexi-N, the y-axis to the response we got to Flexi-N uh, where we put it out in front and incorporated by seeding. And we had similar responses when we did work with urea uh, back in the late mid mid to late 1990s and it's followed on with uh, the work we've done with Flexien. So I've also drawn in there a one to one line. So any, any dot, any trial that lies on that line, we haven't seen a difference between the effectiveness of Flexien banded to where we've put it out in front, but you can see there uh, the line share of the dots and the comparisons have Flexien performing better, giving us better responses where it's banded compared to where, where we've put it out in front. So. Uh, if you're a betting man and looking to get the best response from your nitrogen applications at seeding time, I'd be looking at banding more at seeding, particularly if you've got high stubble loads, as we can see in that photograph uh, on the left there. So um, with the high stubble residues at the surface, we can get a lot more type or immobilisation of the nitrogen put on, on, on top. So this year could be a good year to be banding more than what we've done in recent years. We see similar efficiency gains from banding potassium. As I said before, potassium, adequate potassium supply is critical to getting profitable responses to N and maximising those fertiliser use efficiencies. What we've got here is a trial we did some years ago, uh, ran for seven or eight years, and we looked at the long-term long -term responses to banding four rates of potassium, 0, 15, 30 and 60 kilograms of potassium. So the 15 kilograms of potassium was supplied by K2, 
one of our products, which is bounded below the seed, and the 30 units of K and 60 were supplied by a potash top dressed out in front. So what you can see here is that uh, third year into the trial, this is the third year of, of results from this trial, three years in, we are still getting a better response. Well, we do get a better response from having put some potassium down every year, even compared to where we've, where we've top dressed 60 kilos of potash uh, three years running. And I think in this season, at least, a big part of that was we had a, a fairly dry period after setting time through June and well into July, which limited the availability of the potassium which had been previously applied. So it's just showing that, you know, while, while we might have a good history of potash applications, um, it still needs to be available to the crop. So I think where there is a need for potassium, to be banding some and maybe banding more um, this year uh, could pay off, particularly when we see these efficiency gains from putting it below the crop. And just to finish off on, the need to ameliorate soil constraints. We've done such a good job over the years, uh, and a lot's gone on since this work was done a few years ago, but it just goes to show, well, what we're seeing here is quite a poor response to nitrogen. So three rates of N, 0, 42 and 63 units of N. In a paddock in the central Midlands, which has got bigger issues than nitrogen supply, bigger, bigger issues than potassium supply and bigger issues than phosphorus. So the response there is poor. It's unlikely to be profitable. Certainly going to be unprofitable at today's uh, nitrogen prices, but even with urea at $600 per tonne, uh, I don't think it's going to be profitable. Out the front of the trial, uh, the grower went around, the, went around the trial and he spaded the paddock a few weeks before we sowed it and he put his crop in. And you can see the difference overcoming the main constraint there, which is non-wetting, and I think a bit of compaction has made to that crop. It makes a big difference because crops with a, different, uh, with a decent root system can access nutrients, uh, soil reserves and what we apply. The, the chart there is showing nutrient uptake from the three uh, plots I showed you with 0, 0.42 and 63 units of N, and you can just see there that where we've spaded, we're getting around about four times the nitrogen uptake, three times the, the amount of phosphorus into the plant, and three times the amount of potassium uh, where, where, the, where the crop's been spaded around the outside of the trial. And that's three times the amount of potassium in the plant with 20% of what we put in the trial. So we've got to overcome those constraints. So just to summarise, uh, nutrient demand depends on yield targets. So it's a matter of working out what's a realistic yield target and for different paddocks, no point over fertilising unresponsive paddocks, but by the same token where paddocks have got a good amount of potential, uh, we don't want to be uh, limiting that potential too much. We need to know what we need, so soil and plant testing is the way to do that. Plant testing is very much an underutilised tool for monitoring how things are going in season. I think there's scope to ban more nitrogen where where soil reserves are heavily depleted, depleted, particularly if there's a lot of stubble and the risk of early leaching losses are low, uh, which is, I think applies for a lot of the state. Ban more potassium if it's needed and ameliorate uh, these soil constraints. So that's it. So thanks.